I've got a cool story about a good friend of mine uh, and a dream that he's realized. Um, I'd like you to start here by imagining that you're sitting in this room uh, this morning and you're not able to walk, you're not able to move, you're not able to speak, swallow, taste, and most likely not able to breathe on your own. Uh, this is life to many suffering from ALS. A dear childhood friend of mine, Darren Dent, uh, nicknamed Hoodie by his grandmother, uh, has been suffering from ALS for 11 years. Uh, he deals with these challenges and more on a daily basis, and he's cared for by his family and his girlfriend. Uh, this work is a, a true labor of love, um, and it's a team effort from everybody. Uh, Hoodie still has control of several functions. He can smile, he can blink, and he can dream. And dream he does. Uh, one dream that he has goes back to high school when he and I used to cut class and go to Bay Meadows or Golden Gate Fields here in the Bay Area, go to the horse races. Um, we developed a passion uh, for horse racing and often spoke about how someday we'd own a horse together. And getting into the racetrack uh, was, was quite difficult uh, at that time, being two underage boys, not old enough to, to go in. And, and getting in uh, usually enlisted uh, tracking down some degenerate on his way to the entrance gate. And we would uh, persuade him to claim us as his two kids. We could bring kids into the track with you. So we were two 17, 16 year old kids. And uh, so he, he, we'd usually find one after a period of time, and he'd get us into the track for free. And part of the deal was we'd have to fund his entrance fee, buy him a program, buy him a daily racing form, and then usually uh, buy him a couple beers. After not seeing very much of Darren for 25 years due to uh, just being busy raising a family, uh, we, were reunited, we were reunited uh, after Darren became ill. Um, and we discovered that we both had maintained an interest in horse racing all these years. I had recently gotten into the uh, business of owning racehorses, and Darren had continued with uh, you know, wagering and gambling on the races. Uh, it was one of the things that he could still do, uh, even with ALS. Going out to the racetrack, he could control uh, a mouse uh, on his computer by just triggering a nerve that's in his leg. Uh, just waiting for the cursor to eventually get to a certain point, click, and the computer would, would scroll. Uh, and he would eventually get all of his selections made, and then one of his family members would go make the wager for him at the window, and he could watch the race uh, unfold and start over with the next one. As, uh, as Darren neared his 50th birthday last year, uh, I felt it was a perfect time for us to try and realize this dream together. Uh, so I went down to Los Angeles, to Del Mar, to what's called the Barrett's uh, auction for horses. And I picked out a, a filly that, that just caught my eye and uh, did my bidding. And I was able to purchase her for um, just $5,000. She was one of the lowest priced horses of the day out of about 150 horses. Um, the highest price went for about a half a million dollars put it into perspective. And um, it was incredible because uh, I'm trying to figure out why she caught my eye so much just in looking at her. None of these horses had ever raced, really even trained. And she had an uncanny resemblance to Secretariat. She's got uh, three uh, white feet, um, and even kind of runs the same way. So hoping that meant something. Uh, so to me, it was meant to be. I went ahead and purchased her um, and named her Running for Hoodie. At Darren's birthday party, his 50th birthday party, I uh, surprised him with a gift partnership in Running for Hoodie and told him all about this young filly and, and uh, you know, how, how I'd come to pick her out. 
and told him he better get his owner's license rather quickly because we're going to be racing in about a month. So he and his family loaded up into the car, headed up to Sacramento, and went through the whole process of getting an owner's license. And uh, he wears it like a badge of honor around his neck uh, every time that he can. And that's uh, Darren in the picture there at Golden Gate Fields. I think he did pretty good that day. So this, is, um, this was the introduction between Darren and running for Hoodie. Um, this is right after she came off of uh, the trailer. She was new to the area, just a two-year-old. Uh, we weren't sure how she might react to Darren. Um, but it's as though the two of them had known each other. It was she, unbelievably calm. She went right over to the wheelchair, uh, sniffing him. Um, it, it's uncanny, you know, how much the two of them seem to connect. It's, it's as though they're talking in a language the rest of us just don't understand. She'll, she'll nudge him, she'll pull on his sleeve, uh, she'll rub on his face. Uh, she'll, I've even seen her licking his wheelchair. Uh, things more like a dog might do, but this is a horse that's, that's just bonded with him. Darren had always touted that uh, the best bet was a long shot in a six horse race. And I remember from high school that we each had our, our, our certain uh, wagering angle, and that was his, the six horse and the long shot in the six horse field. So on July 16th last summer, Running for Hoodie started her first race at Sacramento as a long shot in a six horse field. And um, unfortunately, she broke dead last. She was about five lengths behind. Um, just like the odds said she would. Um, but as they entered the far turn, she seemed to be running twice as fast as the rest of the horses. Uh, in fact, I, I feel as though she saw, saw Darren in the stands, maybe. Um, she passed one horse, she passed two horses, three, four, five, and just goes off to um, pull away down the stretch, win the race. Um, you can even hear the, the screaming from our contingency that day of friends and family on the video replay uh, if, you, if you watch it again today. Um, and I think we also set a record for the most amount of people in a winner's circle uh, for that day along with a wheelchair to boot. That's Darren down on the, the far left down there with his family and friends and, and our jockey who stuck with us. Um, absolutely remarkable race, I just couldn't believe it. Um, the race was so impressive that the following day uh, we received a phone call, uh, someone offering to buy Running for Hoodie uh, for $150,000. Uh, but our dream was not for sale. So. We entered Running for Hoodie in the stakes race the following month up in Santa Rosa, where she ran second uh, to a horse that was touted as one of the Kentucky Oaks contenders. Uh, most owners do not experience a stakes race for at least 100 races, but in this case, uh, Darren did it in two. Uh, the next start, the next start was in uh, Los Angeles at Los Alamitos in the $100,000 Barrett's Debutante Stakes. Uh, by this time, running for Hoodie Story had spread uh, and earned so much attention that we got a full page article written about him and the horse in the Daily Racing Form, which is the horse player's Bible to uh, stats. Uh, it also uh, landed me a, an interview right before the race on Fox Sports. Uh, to talk about the story. Um, and at that point, uh, you know, it really got big um, because Darren had now been written about and spoken about nationally, and a lot of people were rooting for him. Um, it was bringing further awareness to ALS uh, where the Ice Buck Challenge left off. So in the race, unfortunately, uh, running for Hoodie, it was not her day to win. Uh, she was the only horse to ship in from a long distance, and we figured she had tired. 
After uh, returning home, we've decided to give her uh, the winter and the spring off to mature, being that she was only two years old. Um, affection for Darren and running for Hoodie has been so great that we've taken extra time in getting her ready to run. Uh, running for Hoodie means so much to many. Um, she represents that dreams should never be forgotten or dismissed due to unfortunate circumstances. In fact, it is sometimes these unfortunate circumstances that bring the dreams to life. Darren is ready and excited to see uh, this dream's next chapter. Um, he's got his computer turned on, he's been to multiple workouts, and he's sporting that tooth around his neck. I forgot to mention that uh, at every race, he wears a necklace of one of her baby teeth uh, that she lost uh, uh, during her two-year-old campaign. Um, so next Sunday, August 28th, Running for Hoodie returns to the races at Golden Gate Fields in Berkeley. Uh, she's been training incredibly well and even has our jockey eager to get back aboard. Being only three years old, she has many races uh, and many smiles to bring to Darren's face. And his smile, in turn, brings one to mine. Uh, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, to hear about one man's courage to overcome the incredible challenges he faces every day in order to live one of his dreams. Thank you.